Hey guys, Scott with the Hydroponic Gardener again. Um, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the NFT system. Nutrient Film Technique is what that stands for. Uh, a lot of those systems are based around um, a reservoir that can be in the shape of a PVC pipe. I've seen some people use vinyl rain gutters. The ones that I've seen that are used in commercial use are typically more of a rectangular square shape, uh, but the PVC pipe is actually what I prefer just because of the thicker walled sides to it, um, thicker side walls, and it's easier to use, uh, in my opinion, just the attachments and stuff that you can get for them. Uh, so the way these things work, I've got four rows here, and the line distributes water at the top. It's tilted at about a three inch height difference from one end to the other for every 10 feet. They say that you should have about a three inch pitch. And what that does is when the water gets distributed through the line, which I'll take a camera view through here and show you in a minute. It, it runs the water through in a very slow motion. Um, they say about two liters per minute, I believe is what it's supposed to do. Uh, or it might be hour, I'm sorry, I'm not sure on that. And it'll run the solution through there and then it drops back into a return line, which then in return goes back to the reservoir and then it just recirculates. And that's ultimately what an NFT system does. Um, let me take the camera here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Just give you a little tour of how the system works. So this is the line here. I'm gonna undo the decorative fencing I've got on here so I can show you the reservoir. You can see how this actually works. So this is my reservoir here. It's just a 55 gallon drum um, that I've modified and it holds about 35 gallons in there at the top of where I've cut it out just for that return line to drop down. But the return line runs over this way and the water pump that's in here pumps water through that half inch line all the way up and then I got it elbowed over here and then it tees out here to these four different openings. Now technically you could use these four openings for plants if you ran it over here and made your own designated hole for it. I just used what I had at the time. But And then I've, I drilled in a couple eight inch lines or one eighth inch holes with a drill bit. It's kind of hard to see that, but you can see the water running there. Um, so there's two holes per inlet there. That way if one gets clogged for some reason, it has a backup. That is the downfall to these, that is if the lines get clogged, uh, your plants automatically don't have any water just on the way this tilts down. Um, so I've got quite a bit of stuff growing in here right now. There's peppers, kale, uh, lettuce, red romaine. It hasn't turned quite red yet, but uh, you've got some peas growing in here they get quite a bit bigger they'll start wrapping around the supports i've got there's some basil green beans things like that but uh, anyway it'll pump it up through there i do have an air stone you can see the air lines right here i've got a couple air stones running in there but i did add um, some holes into a line up at the top that tee out and just come to an end and that just helps with the aeration because then you've got extra bubbles in the water. I, I tend to like to over oxygenate my water just to be on the safe side. Uh, if you don't oxygenate it, the roots can have root rot, which will make them look like they're brown. Um, and if I can find one of these, kind of show you. So when it sits in the pipe long enough, the roots will actually shape themselves to the bottom of the, of the pipe. You can see how that's actually taking its own form because it's spreading out in that nutrient solution the way it's being fed and that's what keeps them going and as the water pumps up through there like I say it goes into that and then with that three inch slope it slowly runs down to the other end here um, I use these rubber end caps these are really nice because you can pull them off to wash them out at the end of the season and then reuse them it makes it a lot more user friendly than PVC glue and a cap on the back end that makes it a nightmare to try and clean out the holes um, these Pipes down at the bottom here, I use this little gasket called a uniseal, and they're awesome because you just use a hole saw to punch a hole through the pipe. You can stick those in and then you put your other pipe in through there and it will tighten the seal so that they don't leak. Um, the advantage of those is that they're adjustable. So when that pipe's in there, if, let's say I wanted this, the water level to be higher on this, I can just push this pipe um, up a little higher and then that will raise the actual drain point of it, making the water level higher. So if, for example, I've got two inch net cups in here. If they're not touching the water and I need them to because the roots aren't deep enough to actually reach the solution yet, I can raise that up 
and change the pitch on these so that it's still getting water until the roots develop a little bit and then I'll drop it back down so it flows the way it needs to afterwards. I mean, you can rig something like this. I only did this because of the way the return line was designed and that pipe was at the front. I still needed it to drain, but I would prefer doing it this way. Like I say, it's a lot cleaner and it makes it more user friendly. So that's, that's an NFT system in a nutshell. Um, these little strings right here are just supports. I put these on because one disadvantage too with two inch net cups is if you got plants that start to get bigger, like the beans and everything, they will get real top heavy, especially when there's winds and stuff. Uh, it can knock them over fairly easy. So you do want to support those if you're growing anything really bigger than lettuce or kale or something in them. Uh, but they've done really good with those types of plants. Um, and just on a side note, I actually put a green bean plant in this system, which I'll talk about later, but a green bean plant in here that I had not hardened. And I did this on purpose because I wanted to kind of show you what happens to these if you don't uh, let them outside a little while before sticking them straight out. If you're seeding your own plants and they're um, inside controlled environment under some shop lights or something, uh, of course, everything is very moderate and mild to them. There's not any extremes. If you don't harden them by taking them outside uh, during the day for a certain amount of hours for about a week, just to kind of get them climatized to the atmosphere, this is what will happen. And this was a great example of how that occurs. Ultimately, just the sun will either scorch them and they, I mean, the leaves turn like to ash basically, and then the plant will just suffer and die, or the winds will suck the hydration right out of them as well. Uh, when I put this out, I did it on a day that was really windy um, to see what it would do, and I did exactly what I anticipated it would do. Um, I've got a whole bunch of bean plants, so I just did this kind of as an example to show you what happens. I mean, so if this happens, don't think that there's something wrong with your nutrient solution or anything. It, it's, I mean, these had nutrient solution, same nutrient solutions going into these, and they're fine, but they were hardened, and these weren't. So if you, if you need to figure out how to harden your plants, you can Google that as well. It gives in a little more detail. You just start out with a couple hours the first day and then uh, extend the time period throughout the days. Just then kind of get used to the outside temperatures. Because if you don't, it will definitely crumble up on you like this. And then all your hard work and starting seeds goes to waste. So don't do that. Um, but in the meantime, if you guys have any questions, uh, like I say, I wanted to mention this too. These are paint strainer bags. Um, I stick these around the pump that I actually have down in the bottom. And then I also stick them on the return lines. Uh, the reason being is it's a great way to catch extra debris. Uh, you can't always control everything that goes into your water, but these will stop stuff from going in. And then if it accidentally gets sucked up through the, the uh, pump line, it can clog up those lines I was showing you. And you don't want that. So you definitely want to do everything you can to try and help uh, minimize any kind of complications you'd have with the system. So NFT system, uh, I'll go over the DFT, which is deep water film technique. Uh, which is partially what this system is and that one and then those are dutch buckets they're all on the same system but they run kind of differently i'll explain that to you on the next episode thanks guys and if you have any questions feel free to let me know take care have a great day bye